Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're doing very well. Today we're gonna to be continuing our UK Autopilot City Tour and we're gonna be going to the Scottish city of Edinburgh. It should hopefully, yeah, bring us off here, which it's doing very nicely all by itself and it's brought us down to 65 and you can see it's slowing us down 60, 55 and then back up to 60 for some reason. Uh, but no, we definitely do wanna be going the 50 off here, which is strange because sometimes on Navigate and Autopilot, it will read the signs and actually marry it. So it'll slow down or speed up uh, as to whatever the signs are. But as we know, the Tesla itself can't actually read all the signs normally. Um, and it won't just like, if we go into a 30, it won't read the 30, it will only do it by GPS, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, so this was a little 50. It picked up a bin in the bus stop back there, which is really quite impressive. Uh, and now, as you can see, so this already thinks we're in a 70. The 70 just starts there. But that, that's not too big of a problem, but it's still showing that it's not actively reading oh, exactly where, uh, where the, the, the sign is that changes the speed limits. Everyone seems to stick to pretty much the speed limit here as well, which is good. Uh, so no one's coming over and, okay, someone is overtaking us now, but in general, they seem to be sticking to the, the speed limits, which is good. The car then slightly cut across. You, the reason it did that there was actually because of the bus stop again. It's always the bus stops uh, that are causing these problems. The, the, as the corner went around, the bus stop was straight and they almost like cut into each other and you saw the car go slightly too close to the right-hand lane for my liking. Uh, but we didn't have to abort it, which is good. I've just slowed the speed down a little bit for that corner that was back there. Please, lights don't change. Yes, they're not going to change. Wicked. All the way through. All the way through. Oh, that is satisfying. There we go. And we got some bikes on the road here. Uh, okay, didn't pick it up. Sometimes it picks up bikes and people and it puts them on the road as road markings, not as like it thinks there's a person there. Okay, we're coming up to our first stoppage. And luckily there is a car in front. So let's see how smoothly the car slows us down and whether it picks up all of the lights here. So there's quite a lot of lights that I can see. Again, picking up the bins, which is great. And yeah, coming up behind the car, you've got the arrows and I can see one, two, three, four, and I can see four sets of lights. Okay, so we're just gonna continue on the flow here. I kind of want to overtake and see if it will do but I don't, think, uh, I don't think it's going to. You can't see any other lane here on the, on the road, so I don't think it thinks that it can go into that lane. However, we do need to go into that lane because as you are about to see, there's lots of cones up ahead um, and the car, yeah, I've got to do it myself here. The car wasn't going into this lane and it wasn't diverting around the cones and because there's cars in front behind us and everything, I had to take control myself. But you can see here, picking up obviously all the cones really well. And continuing on. That was a bit of a shame really, because again, in that scenario, all it needed to let me do was indicate and change lanes like it normally does. And that would have completely solved that issue. But sadly that wasn't the case. And yet again, I had to take control. Well, this car here is coming over to our side of the road and you can see our car braked very hard there because that car came over and now it's going for the overtake so that's good to know that it is being it is very aware of all the cars and where they are and as the as soon as someone's wheel just goes slightly over the line into our road the car does break and it does kind of go whoa do you know where you're going uh, so here I need to change lanes because I want to go straight on okay and I need to go into the left lane. There we go. Nice and quickly done. That's the, the burst of energy from an electric car. Really lets you get into, into situations that other cars probably wouldn't have worked so well for. And autopilot back on here. Now it does look like this is a dual carriageway, but obviously you can't use the first carriage because of all the cars parked on it. So I think I'm gonna stay on this right-hand road. This car in front is all over the place a little bit. He seems to not know quite his spatial awareness. That was the car that I think um, cut across our lane a little bit. Okay, so let's see what the car thinks of these roadworks. Shouldn't really bother it at all. 
No, oh, okay, that's it. That was literally it. That wouldn't have bothered it at all. I'm actually gonna turn the sat nav off because it, it doesn't really matter now, now that we're in the middle. Uh, we just need to kind of drive around. This is gonna be really tough for the car to figure out. Is it gonna go around? Is it gonna... Oh my days. It was, it was really close to doing it all itself, but last second. When you're in the car, it feels so different to watching back the videos. Like I've watched my videos back and at moments where I'm like, oh, you should have let it just try that a little bit harder. When you're actually in the car, you know that it won't do something or you know that it's gonna fail and you have to pull it off. And you just don't get all of those same feelings when you're watching the video back, so. Okay, here, sadly, we are coming up behind a car that's parked on the road. So the Tesla is just gonna sit right behind it. We're gonna have an issue here, okay? So the bus stop here, it's gonna go to the right-hand side or the left and sit behind that Fiesta. It's gone to the left and it's actually sitting sitting behind that reversing Fiesta there. Um, and again, that's you can see you can just see that from a mile off. Wow, okay. Completely slammed on because of that van that was slightly parked on the road. Bit of an overreaction, I think. Okay, it's turned back on now. And we're going up to, we're pretty much going up to the, the seaside actually, or we're going the coastal area of it. Again, cars parked on the road, but it went around those nicely and then it braked really hard again. And I'm pretty sure it was still for that car back there. And again, it's asking us to apply light force. I'm just gonna leave it and make sure it does it all by itself there. Even when you apply light force, you don't actually move the car at all. You can see that I'm not actually shaking the car. Uh, it just needs that little bit of force, obviously, to make sure it knows you're there. Okay, so coming into a 20 zone here, so I'm gonna pull it right down. But again, as we get to this bit, oh my God, it feels like it's gonna curb. <laughs> and someone goes across the road. Uh, it feels like it's gonna curb down there. And obviously that's not, that's not good. And that's not what we want it to do. Wow, I have not a clue if I did that correctly, but that roundabout was very, very strange. Uh, again, it's still a 20 down here. So we've got to keep it nice and low to 20 but again we can see an issue that's about to arise this car here that's coming on the road he has to come onto our side of the road to do this little stretch and autopilot there would have just slammed on and braked very hard um and again yeah with these cars coming up ahead it's going to do it's going to do the exact same thing yeah you can see it there it was just about braking so we have to take control again here all right are you ready to see what a bus stop does Watch this line go wobbly and it will cut into the left. Ready, steady, now. There you go, there you go. That's just, that's a bus stop every time. That is what a bus stop does to the system. And um, I'm hoping that will be fixed relatively soon. Okay, so let's head to that supercharger in Edinburgh and we can follow that. So that should kind of loop us back around somewhere. I'm gonna have to take it off here because I've got lots of cars behind me. And as you just saw there, oh God, it just did that very hard brake again, which I am not a fan of. And again, it's the bus stops. Look at that, see, bus stops pushing us over, pulling us. There's a bike, is it gonna show it? Nope, didn't show it that time either. Clearly the bikes that they're drawing on the Scottish roads, there's another one, that one should show up. See, those ones look normal in my opinion. Um, so I am i don't quite know why those bike symbols aren't showing up. Clearly the car can't quite see them. What about this one, it's quite defined. Yeah, there you go, there it is. Okay, so it saw that one. Again, the bus stop causing the issue and we're coming up some red lights. So I'm gonna have to stop myself. Yeah, you can clearly see the, the bike that's in the road here is bigger and like more elongated than the other bikes. And I think that's causing the problem for the car is that it doesn't like the different look of bikes. It only likes the very simple and small looking bike on the road. That's interesting, that there showed yellow on that light for a very split second, but it's definitely not yellow. And in fact, it can't see any of the lights ahead, which is quite interesting. So we've got a cyclist here in, in the road, I assume turning off because there is a cycle lane on the left. Yeah, so that she's turning right. You can see the, the bike there on the screen nicely. I was a little bit worried there because we went past a bus stop as, as we went past the cyclist and I didn't want, want it to swing me into her at all and uh, it didn't actually, it didn't bother with the bus stop at all that time. A little bit wibbly wobbly as the lines disappear. Yeah, it's picking up the bikes now on the road, which is good, so it's good to see that symbol. I think it just maybe needs to either be going a little bit slower or when it's on like black tarmac and white paint, 
that's when it notices uh, the bike a little bit better. But it's doing it a lot better. Oh, cutting, cutting slightly there, and it actually was about to go over to the left-hand road. It was about to completely switch lanes for us, and I couldn't let that happen because there was a car in the left lane. This here is just preconditioning the battery for supercharging because we're getting close to the supercharger. So it's just getting the car and the battery ready uh, so it charges at a faster rate. So when you set the destination to a supercharger, it will actually do that for you, which is pretty nice. We need to be in the left lane here, but it's definitely taking the right lane. So I'm gonna take this one. And so this, this should be quite easy for it to program. Um, we've got a big box here, which is obviously gridlocked and you can't drive, sorry, you can't stop your car on those yellow lines. Uh, but sadly, at the moment, the Tesla still does stop on those lines. Now, again, like I said, that's something I would presume really easy for them to fix, but I'm not 100% sure. It's actually swapped our lanes here and it's gone over to the right-hand lane, which is correct because there is a bus lane there on the left-hand side. A little bit nervy going, no, no, didn't like that at all. It, because of um, the bus coming over and we were going past one of those central reservations and the central white line disappeared, the car had a little bit of a freak out there and I had to take control, otherwise it wasn't feeling that comfortable. Will it pick up that light at the top there? Yes, it does. It picks up the top light as well. And we had to come to a brake there just for that car to go across. And again, it is two lanes here, but you can see how horrible one the road is. And the lines as well aren't obviously the clearest, but it's just the road. It's so like bumpy and bouncy. Not a nice road to drive down at all. This visualization has also made me notice that we really have no stop signs around here in the UK. There are a few, like, you know, there definitely are a few and I'm sure some councils will have more than others, but in general, there are no stop signs. I haven't seen a stop sign yet uh, for this video. I didn't see one in the last video. I didn't see anything really like that. This car's just like broken down and stopped there, which is really dangerous. Um, so I had to obviously take it off and go around that. And now we're going to be taking a left here. So let's see if the car is. Luckily, this taxi is going left and I actually want to follow it. So will it? No, it wasn't. It was obviously following the road uh, down that way, as it should do. So here you can see we've actually got pylons instead of cones, but it's still showing these as cones. Even though it definitely can show pylons, uh, it doesn't want to. It's showing these as cones, which is really... Oh, there's a couple actually. A couple of them are showing up as pylons. You see that? So if I should put that there, you can see that some of them do show up as pylons and cones. A little bit strange, but yeah. Autopilot's just turned back on and, whoa, okay, a little bit weird there. I'm hoping it's gonna turn on, navigate on autopilot down here, uh, but it doesn't, no, it doesn't look like it is going to. So again, we've got some different kind of looking arrows, just some pointing back in arrows here, and they should appear nicely on the screen. There they are, one two so yeah they're all good we're gonna swing out here to the right at some stage slightly there we go and that gets us nice and central again what i am impressed with is even though that ford ranger in front is a pickup truck it has obviously its rear canopy on but the car still shows it on the visualization as a truck without the canopy on so i'm i'm really impressed how it knows that that is a pickup truck um, obviously, it knows that just by seeing it, uh, but it just shows that the neural net and everything that they're doing is uh, is doing a fine job at working out lots of different cars. Looks like this charger then is right outside of the airport, and you can see that there was a stop sign there backwards. There's loads of arrows here on the on the road, and here are the Tesla chargers. There's only two of them. That's nice to see. Strictly no parking at any time. Non-Tesla vehicles will be removed and it costs 180 quid. So there we are, everybody. That is Autopilot in Edinburgh. Let me know what you thought about it and how well the car did in this city. Until next time, thank you for watching. Don't forget, drive safe.